Um, when the aquifer was brought up during a recent visit from um, Mike Whipsack, um, you, you, he seemed to dismiss the importance of some aquifers and probably this one by implying that it's not a high value aquifer. Um, in reading over the model ordinance, uh, that ordinance doesn't rate aquifers. It doesn't have a hierarchy of aquifers. Um, it simply prohibits landfills over aquifers. Um, secondly, I'd like to just ask a hypothetical, you know, high value of whom? Um, as a conservation commission, we argue that no one should really be cavalier with our natural resources. Wells draw groundwater from aquifers, and aquifers should be protected. In addition, the volatile organic compounds, VOCs for short, have been found in test wells at the landfill. VOCs are things not naturally found in water and have no business being there. In April of 2007, Casella submitted a water quality report based on samples taken from test wells at the landfill. The report found some higher than normal levels of VOCs in some wells and VOCs in wells where they hadn't been before. DES sent a letter to the landfill informing them that a remediation plan was necessary. I believe one was submitted. I'm not sure about that. Um, I'd like to know what the status of the remediation plan is and also why DES thinks it's okay to pile more trash on an area where its own model ordinance says it should be and where we're already seeing some problems with water quality. Thank you. Thank you. We'll give the answer here in one moment. Um, the, the, the aquifer that uh, this uh, landfill sits on top is, is a stratified drip aquifer, which actually there was a, a couple of studies done on that. Uh, aquifer by the U.S. Geological Survey. One was in uh, the 1970s um, by by a gentleman, John Cotton, who actually worked for us until just a couple months ago. He, he's since retired. No, he's no longer there. That's correct. He's no longer there. And, um, and when he was at the USGS, he did some mapping out there and, um, and identified this area as a potential high-yield aquifer. However, in uh, 1996, the USGS did some much more detailed um, investigation of this aquifer. And I'll just read you a little quick um, uh, the findings but briefly here. It says, subsequent more detailed investigations by the USGS, including subsurface drilling logs, uh, demonstrate that there is not enough coarse material with sufficient saturated thickness to have a high potential uh, to walk in. This back study was done in 1996. Um, this, this aquifer that the um, landfill sits on top is, is classified as GB, which is the lowest classification that, that the state has. Um, the only type of aquifer that you would not be able to site a new landfill on is uh, an aquifer that is classified as GAA. And those aquifers have to be a um, uh, much you know, stricter standard. Can you tell uh, me where it says that in the model it, ordinance? It, um, I don't know about the model ordinance. What, I, what I'm, um, what I'm um, reading here is from, is from state, state rules and state law. I wonder, I wonder why that would be different from your own model ordinance. Yeah, well, Which I have a copy of right yeah. here. I don't think the model ordinance uh, addresses this particular aquifer. This, what I'm giving you here is the, is the actual classification of this aquifer. You're saying that that's the only classification you couldn't have a new land on the landfill over, and I'm saying it doesn't say that anymore. Right. I understand what you're saying. The uh, model ordinance is something the department developed to help municipalities deal with aquifer protection in their communities. Yes, because um, they're concerned. The department is in a position where it receives an application for any activity to apply the law and the rules in a manner that's fair to both the public and the applicant. 
And our read of things is that, and I think you correctly say this is an existing landfill, so we're not yes. talking about siting a new landfill here. Um, but the, no matter what kind of an application is before us, we're in a position where we can only apply the law and the rules. That's so that the law and the rules are fair to everybody. Now, I, I want I want Mike to answer that first because I know he was going to talk about the classification of the aquifer. And what I want to say is, if you're drinking water from an aquifer, no one can argue that's the most important aquifer for you. And when you study hydrogeology and you study groundwater science, the first thing you learn is the definition of an aquifer. And it's really in the eyes of the beholder. If, if, uh, it's basically defined by, I'm going to paraphrase here, but as a formation capable of, uh, capable of a water bearing formation capable of providing water and adequate the quality and yield for a particular use. Now, if you are an individual homeowner, you might need a couple hundred gallons a day, and if the quality is good, that's your aquifer. Um, and the thing to understand in New Hampshire, given our geology, by that definition, aquifers are almost everywhere. There is virtually nowhere in the state that we don't have an aquifer, because almost everywhere we have a formation beneath us that is capable of providing some quantity of water and some quality. Yes, but and, um, I have a, excuse me, I have a map here that shows aquifers, and it doesn't show all of Bethlehem or all of the surrounding over, over right. the immediate over aquifers. Most aquifer <laughs> mapping places some qualitative and quantitative value on particular aquifers, and most of that mapping is trying to demonstrate or, or uh, depict particular aquifers that have a certain quality of yield. Um, so I don't, you know, I wanted Mike to explain to you what we know about this aquifer. It's not offered as a way of saying that it is an important groundwater area formation because it is. Um, so I, you know, I, at this point we have an application before us. We're going to take comment on it. We're going to review that application. We're going to render a decision, and all of these factors are important in that decision. And more so is the also the information about the uh, volatile organic compounds being in the wells and. What is being done in terms of the remediation? Right, the work is being done on that. Um, right now, there's work that uh, NCDS is doing to address that question. It's been our understanding that in the past, um, because there was a landfill that was unlined there, there were ground, groundwater impacts, and they include bulk organic contamination that got into the groundwater at the site. Um, there's also been, um, as we understand it, some during construction, during offloading of leachate, there may have been some releases that resulted in VOC contamination getting into the aquifer um, adjacent to the beneath the facility. Um, that's important to us. That's an important question that we're addressing right now. We do have work that we requested in CES to perform, and we're waiting for the response and, and the results of that work. Um, that's going to also, those are also important things to factor into our decision to determine. Um, also, I just, since I'm here, um, sometimes it's not always easy to know what you're finding on the website. And I just want to be sure, maybe I'm not looking at the right thing, but there was a letter of September 13th uh, to Mr. Cotton, and attached to it was work plan remedial activities of soil potentially impacted by leachate. Is that the right, that's, that's part of that work. Okay, because um, I have a question, and I would. This is a great opportunity. The schedule in in this says that the construction schedule for this work plan will depend on resolution of the resolution of the pending Type One B and Two uh, permit applications. This alternative work plan will only be implemented if the Stage Four Phase Two project is not developed. So I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, that, that's a little confusing um, in that terminology. What, what is actually happening now is that plan is being implemented. We didn't want the plan to be tied into approval or disapproval of any additional permit. So that plan is currently out to bid um, for contract to start that work. So remediation will be done independent of any other process that's going on. That is a definite. I wonder why it would be worded like I mean, geez. <laughs> I think initially the, totally opposite. the initial proposal was linked to this permit modification. 
and he felt that was appropriate. So we asked for them to submit a revised plan that would be implemented regardless of where the application stood. Thank you. Yeah.